everyone, and welcome back to Todos Santos. Today, we are continuing on with filling in the downtown, and we're starting off by replacing this uh, very small, probably originally undersized avenue with a much larger and more aesthetically appealing one, or at least I think so. And I'm putting in this uh, feature, which is something I've always wanted to do, which is having light rail run all the way down the middle of this avenue. So this is a pretty important road. It carries all the traffic, well, most of the traffic that comes from the freeway and the rest of the city to this northern end of the island, or the peninsula, rather, that the downtown is on. So anyone that isn't taking the main strip we made, I believe, in episode 15 or something like that, they're going to be taking this uh, quite high-speed avenue that has very few intersections. It's almost like a little bit of a freeway, but obviously, you know, a bit more pedestrian-friendly, lower speed. Um, and it's not restricted access. But anyway, they take this uh, nice avenue and they can drive that all the way across the shoreline to get to this area that we built last episode or the area we're going to be laying the groundwork for this episode, which is uh, gonna be a, a high density area on the shoreline next to the river that runs between this peninsula and the original island where we started the city. And then at the end of this uh, road, it just turns into a, a low capacity two-way road um, because it's basically served its purpose to funnel traffic into this area. And you might've also seen me place down that sunken uh, tram station. We're going to be detailing that. I think it's a really cool asset and I, I love how the kind of this glass enclosure sticks up and you can see down and you can actually see all the people mingling down there waiting for trains. You can see the trains going in and out, very cool. And then the light rail line just terminates there at a little loop around. There is a mod I've seen that allows trams to reverse instead of having to go around a loop, um, but I haven't installed that yet. And I think because I've already integrated these loops at the terminuses, termini, terminuses of uh, the lines, I'm just gonna, you know, I've already integrated those into the landscape and detailed them. So I'm just gonna leave them. I don't really mind that too much. Uh, although I probably will check out that mod at some point in future city potentially who knows and because this area is a bit of a, a urban center I suppose kind of on the edge of downtown um, I wanted to sink the rail so that it wasn't uh, conflicting with all these intersections and that's why we put this sunken station down here although really the main purpose of putting that is just because it looks cool and I wanted to use this asset that I had so yeah we have to have those bridges across there and now I'm going to start putting down some of these amazing retaining wall assets, which I've been using all over the city. They just look so good. Because we have this slope issue that I've talked about several times already, um, they are just so incredibly handy to take care of that, especially if you're doing really highly developed urban areas like this one. Uh, so I'm trying to line up the retaining walls here with the to cover up the fences so that, you know, it seems pretty pointless to put fences down there since it's already enclosed in a giant <laughs> river of or channel of concrete here it's not perfect it doesn't end up being perfect and there's some places where the fences clip out of the walls but at, at a city of this scale where I really want to fill it in and make it look like a big city there are only so many of those details that I can get right especially the first try uh, there are always things that I go back and fix and I have actually been doing that for some of these things that I say I'm going to go back and fix so this might be one of them because it can get a little aggravating to see those fences sticking out. And uh, as far as I know, there's not a version of the light rail or the tram track asset that doesn't have the fences. Maybe that's just because I don't have it installed. Uh, I'm not exactly sure on that. And we also have this very cool looking like weathered key there. I know it's supposed to look wet, like because it's supposed to be put next to the water, but I just think it looks really cool. And maybe that's like an older retaining wall that they put in. And because we are right next to the ocean, right next to the water, that's going to be weathering it and, and providing moisture for all this moss and stuff to grow, I figured it, or algae or whatever it is, I thought it was kind of fitting to put it there. And it just looks really cool. Kind of gives a little bit of division between this uh, somewhat more modern area and uh, that older area at the tip of the peninsula where it's had more time to become worn down and, and uh, had stuff grow all over it. And then we're just surrounding this area with a few more buildings because I didn't just want this station to be, you know, packed in here and had all this uh, intense infrastructure building just to not have anything around it. So I wanted to really fill it in, make it look like a somewhat dense area. 
even though this isn't an area that's going to be full of high rises other than the ones we put down last episode of course which are already there um, but it's still fairly dense and it's in the general vicinity of the the overall density of downtown and then of course as i say that i put down these uh, parking lots which are like the least dense things you can do oh well and I'm really trying to take advantage of all these details that are already in the station. Like we have that little building there where the Sims can go down and access the sunken station and the flower beds. I'm just trying to integrate those with some, some walls and stuff and make it look a little bit more uh, natural without having to go in and put down every single little piece of detail myself. Which is fun, don't get me wrong, but very unsustainable for a city of this size. I'm sure I've said something amounting to that so many times already. <laughs> But it's just kind of the theme of this city, really, is trying to balance detail with, with uh, development and expansion and, uh, you know, keeping my sanity. And I think a big part of, you know, why I've had to take breaks from the city and making videos in general is just that uh, to stick with the same city in, at such a level of detail and trying to make it into a big city is, it just, you know, you get tired of it after a while. But I really don't want to just go, you know, jump from project to project. And, and abandon projects just like that whenever I get tired of it. And ultimately, I mean, the point of a game is to have fun. So <laughs> um, I'd like to not play it when I don't have fun. And I'd like to go back to it whenever I think I can have fun again with it. And I'm having so much fun building this city right now. I have like a, a massive backlog of footage that I need to edit together and record voiceover and uh, make sound and do all those fun things, which I do. I actually quite enjoy making videos like this. So it's not a chore or anything to do that. It just takes time and an ounce of motivation here and there. All right, so on that topic of backlogged footage, um, I mentioned this a few times already, but this footage is quite old at this point. Uh, by the time you're watching it, it's probably over a year old. So a lot of these assets and uh, you know the way I'm laying out the buildings and all that is not quite up to date with how I'm doing it uh, now in 2022. I'm recording this in October. And I'm also recording a big backlog of episodes to upload before I make any sort of announcement or anything or, or upload the first video or whatever. So you might be leaving comments or something, making suggestions uh, as to things I should change or you know suggesting new episodes or something and please keep those coming. I will absolutely read all of those and consider all of those. Um, but any good ideas you have, you might not see them implemented for quite a while because I have so many episodes recorded. And yeah, basically what that means is we have a lot of cool builds coming up, or at least I, I think they're cool and I hope you'll like them. But it's gonna take a while to catch up to um, what I've been doing most recently, which is what I'm most excited about. But I'm not gonna get into that. I'm not gonna spoil anything yet. Just wanted to let you know that, uh, you know, where we are in terms of the city and where I am in terms of where I'm building it. Okay, back to what I'm doing. I figured uh, because there's this little older corner with that key that I talked about here that curves along the road there, um, I figured it would be a bit less developed uh, and not quite as maintained. So there's just been time for this little bit of a woods to grow up here, um, which I kind of like to have splotches of green space here and there, um, whether it's an intentional green space or not. <laughs> so yeah, there's that little corner of trees there and you know like I mentioned before I probably am a little too trigger happy when it comes to putting down little wooded areas like that in the urban part of the city but I think that's just going to be part of Toto Santos's identity is having trees everywhere and I can definitely think of, of worse bad habits to have than putting trees down all over okay anyway we're moving over here to the very far end of the avenue and I wanted to Again, not have this rail intersect with the road, especially right next to that major intersection here. So I put this uh, light rail bridge, and I just think it's kind of cool to jump from a light rail bridge on one end, and then it travels along at ground level, and then it sinks on the other end. And that's the kind of thing you see in real life, is you adapt rail networks, especially if they're recent rail networks like this one, to the built environment that's already there in whatever way you can. And because we have this hill, it kind of just makes sense that for the rail to come in here above the road and then farther down to be sunk and have that cool sunken station. And now I'm working in here on transforming this two-way road, which connects to the freeway uh, into the two one-way roads. Oh look, node controller. Um, <laughs> and this was the perfect spot to be the first time I use node controller to get these. I, I mean, the core mechanic of the mod, at least as I use it, is 
just to raise the, the corner offset value, which can help you get these really long sweeping transitions between roads, and that solves a lot of the problems of, of the vanilla game, which is the way roads intersect at steep angles like this. And it can just get some really cool looking and much more realistic looking uh, roads by using this. Uh, and then of course at the same time I also downloaded its very natural companion, the intersection marking tool, which I found very overwhelming at first. So you might see me kind of fumbling around with the settings here uh, the first few times I use it, but it's a very powerful tool and it, it saves a lot of time and it's also really not that hard to use once you play around with it for a while. At least to get very basic uh, looking intersections, you can do it very easily, very quickly, especially once you get presets built up and templates, that sort of thing. Two amazing mods that work perfectly together. Or, well, I shouldn't say perfectly. There are some very minor issues, um, such as you might have seen, I had that yellow chevron in between the two one-way roads where they meet, and because it's such a long node, they kind of uh, cross over and almost make like a figure eight shape instead of just terminating at the tip of the, the triangle. But like I said, very minor. And anyway, it's probably uh, user error, <laughs> not understanding how the mod works. Okay, now we're moving along to the riverbank here and setting the groundwork for next episode, which is going to be a bit more uh, building focused, a bit by building, I mean like structures that people live in and stuff, uh, along with some detailing. Uh, this episode is much more infrastructure based. And this is a, a theme that's going to be repeated for the next few episodes is I'm going to have an episode where I lay out the infrastructure or do part of a build, and then we're going to have a second episode uh, where I finish it off, put down some details, and have a hopefully interesting cinematic video. Unfortunately, that means that the this episode and the episodes that are kind of like it aren't going to have cinematics because basically I had to split one big build like this into two episodes. So I hate to say it, but there is not going to be a, a long cinematic video at the end of this. Um, but hopefully it'll make up for it in the next episode where you basically are going to get two episodes worth of cinematics. But the, the reason I have to do that is because it would I either have to make like, you know, a 90 minute episode of Toto Santos, which I'm sure some of you would enjoy and I would enjoy making, but I, I think most people wouldn't watch that. Or I have to spoil things for the second episode in the first episode, if that makes sense. And I don't want to do that either. Okay. So you might be wondering why I laid down three roads here and it's because why not? Um, so I wanted to have a uh, somewhat pedestrian friendly area that's still catered to cars because this is sort of a semi-tourist area. This is, not, this is not even by far the main tourist area of the city. It's just somewhere it would maybe be a bit of a, a secondary tourist destination. Uh, so they didn't want to scare away uh, potential tourists by not having enough parking. So what we have is the Central Avenue, which is just a road that has bus lanes and uh, a single lane for traffic in each direction and then we have this little uh these little side roads on either side well side roads on either side wow that's a revelation but basically the point of that is to access lots of parking on the side so yeah not really pedestrian friendly but it's more pedestrian friendly than just having like freeway through here obviously uh, and i probably wouldn't have been able to do a build like this without a uh, node controller and i it definitely wouldn't have looked good without intersection marking tool because I wouldn't have had the patience to go in there and, and do the sorts of things that I do here. Like you might've seen me before putting in the coloring for the bus line to match the bus lanes. I think, I mean, that's the sort of thing this mod can do is, is just give you way more flexibility in terms of the way your networks look. There's just so many different options. Like I come in here in a second and I'll just wait for it. And you can, you can do these fillers and you can do different shapes and you can adjust the various aspects of the shapes. Like here, I wanted to make it look like uh, it was indicating that there's a bus lane, but normal traffic can cross over there to access the side roads. And so I just did that like broken up uh, filler with, with those squares. Okay, now we're moving over to this little weird bridge that comes from downtown. Uh, I cut out the footage of me connecting that there because it was just a painful to watch. I, it, it was one of the worst things I've ever built. So it's just gonna remain off screen. Don't worry about it. You did not miss anything, trust me. Um, but I just, I, I found this little slope in downtown and I thought I'd take advantage of it to run this road over the avenue we built. Cause like I said, I don't want that many intersections for it, but I still wanted to provide 
access to this area from the main downtown strip. Um, so that's why I have this little bridge here and it comes in because the slope is so steep. Uh, it comes in at an angle and has this uh, little triangular intersection here. And then I'm just running down a couple more roads uh, just to give as much access as possible from the avenue because I don't want this to be, you know, completely separate from downtown, but I also don't want it to just be kind of a seamlessly integrated road network. Uh, and that's just sort of a result of having this avenue that is, is it has as few intersections as possible, but then also wanting to connect to this area on the other side. It's sort of the problem you get with a freeway, where you put a freeway down in between two areas, and then there are just very few connection points because you can't just put a bridge every block. I mean, you could if you wanted to, but it's not very practical and it's not usually done. Um, so it's sort of that problem at, at a smaller scale. And now that I'm thinking about it, I probably should have put some pedestrian bridges over because I've been enjoying making those all over the city. So maybe I'll come back and do that. And this is where I start really having fun with node controller. I've always wanted to do an avenue like this that has a dedicated entry and exit lanes, almost like a mini bit of a freeway. This is kind of like a 50% of the way to a freeway. Um, but you'll see what I do there with the one-way roads uh, to feed in from the avenue. And then we come in and drag those nodes all the way out. Well, not all the way out, but a lot of the way out. With node controller, with the corner offset setting, which like I mentioned is very powerful. Uh, and that gives the look of having turning lanes here. So you can transition from a two-lane one-way road to a three-way one-lane road, and then have that exit out onto this one-way road that runs down to the to the smaller avenue with the bus lanes. And that just gives the impression of having uh, exit lanes and entry lanes sort of without having to put down a giant freeway network. And I just love the way this turns out, especially after we put down a few details next episode. All right, I'm going to cease my chattering for a moment while I finish this up and I will meet you back over by the original freeway in just a minute to do something a little bit different. Why am I deleting all this stuff? That's a good question. There are a couple of reasons for that. First of all, this intersection did not handle the traffic at all. Second of all, it didn't look very good. And third of all, uh, we had this new avenue coming in, which I needed to somehow connect up to this interchange because that's right where the avenue terminates. So we kind of have this weird area where we need to have a road and a freeway and another road, both of these being main roads, intersecting. So that's why I wanted to change it up here and because I had these new tools with the node controller and the intersection marking tool, I wanted to do something a little different than I usually do. And we're putting in a single point urban interchange. Or as it's more humorously put into acronym, SPUI. Uh, so a SPUI is basically a diamond interchange where instead of having two intersections, you have one big intersection at the center and left turning traffic does not conflict with other left turning traffic or anything like that. So it's a little safer and I believe it's a little bit higher capacity. Plus it just looks pretty dang cool to have it elevated above the freeway like this. Even though it's it does a lot better at handling traffic than the diamond interchange did, it still <laughs> gets pretty swamped. At some point later in the series I'm building and I notice that there's like a horrible traffic jam in this area. <laughs> and it's I, I try everything I can like changing time traffic lights and uh, doing various lane connections and road adjustments to try to fix it. And it's there's nothing I can do. So this is actually the location in the city that forces me to uh, allow traffic to despawn, which is basically easy mode for, for traffic management. But it was just driving me crazy, and I couldn't stand having just these painfully long lines of traffic backing all the way up onto the freeway, all the way from the island to this area. And at this point, there's just, I mean, there's only so much I can do. So we're moving into easy mode in terms of traffic, which... I'll admit it's a little disappointing, 
But when it comes down to it for playing the game like this, uh, I value having a free flow of cars and having that look uh, much more than uh, having perfect traffic management that aligns with the way the vanilla game is designed. And I just think there comes a point where that's not where those two goals aren't compatible. <laughs> Uh, especially when you're trying to focus on on making things look nice and, and having details in there. And speaking of details, we're just doing the barest of detailing here, since most of the details have already been put down when we detailed this whole stretch of freeway. Um, so I have those little overpass supports there, just to kind of give the feeling that you're in a tunnel when you're driving under it. And then I wanted to make it look like it was one big bridge, I guess, that was stretched across this area instead of just being like these kind of weirdly shaped road networks. So I put some concrete in between those little triangles there where the, the turning lanes meet. Again, just to give the look that it's uh, kind of an intentionally shaped piece of concrete that's been stretched across here instead of an arbitrary uh, curving road network, which it is. But I just wanted to hide that fact. Because I think one of the biggest strengths of this game uh, just as it is, is you know, without all these mods and stuff, is that you get the freedom to build your roads however you want. Obviously, they're not always going to look exactly like you want, but you you can do nice curved roads, which you don't always get in a game like this. But occasionally, that detracts from the look, and you have these kind of weird, yeah, that just that. I mean, you can see there that big curve on either side of the, the spooey. Uh, just looks a little unrealistic. Uh, I hope that makes sense, and I'm not like over or under explaining. Uh, what my problem with the bridge is, but I, I probably could have done a bit more to get the look I wanted, but at this point we're going to move on to the end of the episode. Again, I apologize that there are not exactly any cinematics. Uh, there is a before and after, and then one shot uh, just to see you out, so you can get a glimpse of the building we did this episode. So hopefully that will uh, whet your appetite for next episode, where there will be plenty of detailing and some nice long cinematics. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Toto Santos, and I absolutely cannot wait to see you on the next one. Bye. Thank you.